You want to fight the hooker with me? Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, you think I speak this way, you can hear me or? You need a mic. Which is better? Uh, can you, on the slide, I will start. Okay. Let me check whether it's working, yeah, the slide. Okay, it's working. Okay, guys. Uh, my name is Anthony Wong. I've been in the tourism and hospitality field for close to 50 years. Yeah, I started in a travel company, Asia Overland, I started my company 47 years ago. It's actually the largest inbound company in the country, but we keep it very quiet because we are a private company. Yeah, uh, uh, my business started with Europeans because they like nature. I'm a naturalist and environmentalist. I teach and lecture all over Asia Pacific for the last 30 years. Yeah, and I, I would represent Malaysia in uh, the last World, Con World Expo in Dubai. I represented them uh, last month. I represented Margi in the Asia Agriculture uh, Workshop in Natural Farming. So my passion as a naturalist has taken me a long journey and it's only now recently we are talking about climate change, the 70 SDG, ESG. So my first hotel, I said I have traveled. Uh, my first hotel was actually Holiday Villa Langkawi. We bought the land in 88, it opened in, in 91. It's just recently been sold, but two years later we opened, we sold it because uh, nobody knew Langkawi. Uh, sorry, I also want to explain, uh, I don't represent only the hotel, my hotel French Penny Langkawi, but I represent also the Hotel Owners Association of the country. So Shah is the executive director, 80% of all the big owners are in the association. Yeah, the resort world, I mean, Genting Group, Dorset Group, Holiday Villa Group, all the big groups are inside YTL group. Yeah. So now when I purchased this hotel in 2005, it was a very old hotel, 14 years when we purchased now it's already 32 actually, 17 years we operate. My goal was to make it the greenest hotel in the world. You got to have a goal and a vision. It's actually one of the greenest today, definitely greenest in Southeast Asia. And I developed the cost for Green Hotel for ASEAN. Now, we started with 25 ways to save energy water waste. Very simple, slowly, step by step. Nobody knew how to start when I started in 2005 because the, the, the Malaysian Green Building Council was only started in 2009. But the ASEAN Green Hotel was also started in 2009. Yeah, so it is a very large property on the beach front of 320 meter, only 115 villa. So I've got still a lot of land for development. But when I took over, it was sitting on sea sand. Nothing can grow. Very ugly. But if you see today, it's very luscious. I developed a new system to grow on sand. You heard that people in China, they grow on uh, desert sand. I developed to grow on salty sand. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm inside a wetland actually. I'm surrounded by water hyacinth. And I developed, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the journey. So you start off with something very simple yeah, environment policy and vision. People say, How do we start? You know, for the last two days, they say, How do you start? Start slowly. But you must start with a vision. 
what's your mission and your environment policy statement. So every staff that come in, the GM, whatever, you know this vision? You listen, you see it, and then you learn. Because hoteliers don't understand SDG, they don't understand sustainability. Normal hotel school only teaches f and housekeeping, front office, yeah? They do not teach sustainability. So when I started my journey, of course, I've been in the academy field for 30 years. Yeah, I'm a young professor at UUN, hospitality, engineering, uh, Taylor's University, and uh, UKM Lestari because it's multidiscipline. Now, you have to start this because where is your guideline? Where's your basis to start off? So today, the minute as UN SDG came out in 2015, I use that as the benchmark. Formerly, I use the ASEAN Green Hotel. So you need to have term of reference. Once you have a term of reference, you see the gap. Then you work on the gap. But as they all say, start slowly. Start what you call uh, low-lying fruits. Okay, sorry. I, I won't go to my I won't go through that for this for all of you you know all the 17 yeah but you have to use that as a base of course uh, it's very simple I start with solar hot water because hot water takes a lot of energy very straightforward but this is second generation my hotel now 17 years the solar panel hot water say guarantee 10 years after 10, 11, 12 years, they break apart. Yeah, so this second generation patent from UK made in Turkey because second generation, first generation is black body covered with glass, then copper wire hold taking the water up. Second generation in vacuum, vacuum uh, pipe and titanium, more efficient conductivity than copper so the first generation hot water around 60 65 this one is 75 degrees centigrade and low cloud so second generation so you say yeah mm. sorry so again simple very easy uh, this is just only 25 kilowatt because we don't have many big spaces. They're all mostly villas. So this one, we did it, but of course, it's now much cheaper. Then charge my seven electric vehicle. Now, during COVID, I've been permanent in Langkawi now since August 2020. COVID started March. So I closed the hotel for six months. Then I started operation. Now, zero. Eh? We retrenched all my staff. We gave them a lot of compensation, three million. I start back. I took 30 staff because it's zero. In 2020, open close, open close, open close till 21, open close. So uh, this helped to reduce my manpower. Whatever we computerize, mechanize, we use this. I was looking at golf buggy golf buggy second hand is is a 15 to twenty thousand. this one from china can take 500 kg only five thousand three. cheap so we use it and it and it doesn't give you trouble only battery and flat tire because we grow a lot of bogan villa and bogan villa has got thorns so we chop down more bogan villa because it creates a lot of flat tire so this as I say you have to invest in a bit of technology by save you manpower i have saved through since i'm there for years i paid consultant to help me in staffing manpower i do it myself now i reduce 40 percent manpower but you have to do it yourself be on the ground yeah but i'm there because i teach organic farming i closed my organic farm school in gomba and moved to Langkawi where I started farming 17 years ago. So 
because of I'm there, I'm the main farmer, I teach local community how to farm, and because food cost has gone up 25%, yeah, besides energy 30%. So I plant a lot of fruits. Uh, I'll show you. I have my supervisor because I cannot get farmer. I was a main farmer for one and a half year. I worked from dark till dusk. No one to help. So I got this guy. He's 55 years old. He's got no idea about gardening or landscape. Now he's my main person because he fell into it. He was just a, what you call, hard laborer. But he loves it. He understands. He picked it fast. He's my supervisor. He's got eight gardeners under him, including the farmer. So you can train someone as long as they're passionate. Of course, solar lighting and, you know, we save energy. Uh, uh, I get about one and a half ton of organic mangoes. Uh, I made a lot of tea. Uh, whatever it is, it's all come from the garden. You need the knowledge. Yeah, and uh, one of the first three I planted was uh, neem tree, azurita, indica. This is the main tree in Indian Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah, it's antivirus, antibacterial, antifungus. So this is one tree, but this tree also was very fast growing. So because there were no trees around, only coconut trees, and it was salty. So this tree is very hardy. It can take salt water. Very, a semi-desert tree. It comes from India and Bangladesh. That's why it's called Azurita Indica. Yeah. Uh, if you got, if you got chicken pop, you got shingle, which is virus. You bait with this three times a day if you can. Five days is gone without scar. Yeah. And we make our own charcoal compost. This year I made about eight ton of organic charcoal. Charcoal is used to host microbes for organic farming. One gram of charcoal is equivalent to four cubic meter of microbe space. So it's the latest in green technology. Yeah, I spoke at the Asia Agriculture Congress representing Malaysia under Maradi. China, not China, Taiwan, Japan, Korea say, expensive for the farmer to buy charcoal. I say, why? Let the farmer make themselves lah. Every day, I burn in four bathtub. All these bathtub I didn't throw away, they are iron cast and porcelain. Every day I burn, it comes, the wood comes from my driftwood, it comes from the wood from the garden. I get 45 to 55 kg of charcoal a day. Why so expensive? Simple to go. Pyrolysis. Yeah? So there are many simple ways, it's just you have to test it out. Learn. 13 ton of yeah, compost biochar 13 ton in one year. Uh, charcoal is 2 ringgit a kg. Sorry. Uh, I have difficulty in moving my slide, girl. Girl, can you move the slide for me? Yeah, because I have difficulty in moving my slide. So, okay, I'll say next and then you do it. Because this is not doing very well. Now, I breed rabbit because people love rabbit. I have bunny by the beach. Yeah, but I breed them for the poo. Because rabbit poo is the only poo you can put directly into plants. And it's a slow release because it's in like packet, packet round. So I breed them. But I don't buy any food. It all comes from the weeds I harvest and I grow on site. The whole idea is everything is closed loop. So you save money and it has got uh, entertainment purpose. Next. Yeah, and I, I, I engage our guests. They all. So basically, hmm. from day one, I focus on children and education. So it is a green hotel school. So I have four full-time environment and education officer to do my research work and to actually do activities for, for adults and children. Next. So 
Okay, again, fertilizer we produce all naturally and we, you see, it's on sand. What happened is I engaged the top landscape uh, company in KL to go to Langkawi. When they saw the soil, they said, are you mad? You have, you're on the beach. This is beach sand. How can you grow anything on beach sand? They gave up. So I say, okay, being a naturalist, you cannot hold water. So early days, I got so I got hundreds of cardboard because new television, new fridge, they all got cardboard. So I dug two and a half feet. I put two layers of cardboard below to hold water. Then I bought soil in, yeah, and then you can grow. But now I got thousands of tree. I do two and a half feet still, one feet of leaf and branches. Then I bring waste food, yeah, and compost for the microbe. Yeah, and I put soil that I dug up, four inches, then I start again two times. I wait for three to four months. As long as wet the field, I grow. No need to turn the compost. Local staff don't like to do work. So you have to find a solution. So this is how we, we grow on site and then we, we feed the plants. Now you need a lot of compost because I grow a lot of food. When I say I grow a lot of food, I get four to six tons of mango, uh, papaya. Five to eight tons of banana a year. Half a ton of kangkong. So I need a lot of fertilizer. You have to feed the soil, the soil feed the plants. And it's what you call no dig farming. You do not dig. You keep the mycorrhizae alive to feed and then you put charcoal for the microbes. So this is natural farming. We are behaving like the forest. What does forest get the, the fertilizer from the leaves? Yeah, so we, we use the concept. Yeah, next. Now, I built a farm school to teach. So I keep all the waste wood I cut from the garden and this is how I make my charcoal. Five to six hours, these are all my old bathtub. When I showed this in the Asia conference workshop, they laugh at me. You use a bathtub? But modern bathtub is made from fiberglass. These are the old fashioned bathtub. You don't get them anymore. Yeah? So then you cover with zinc. Yeah? When it's paralysis, it's burned with little oxygen. Yeah, maybe you still get a bit smoke, maybe three percent smoke is acceptable. Yeah, and that's what you do. Okay, next. Now, every year I get, I, I say I have so much mango, I freeze them, uh, I make ice cream and this and that. And all this, if you go for breakfast, all this come from my garden. Organic, save money. The idea is save money. If you look at saving money, then you can use it. But you need the knowledge. You need to train people. Next. Now, we just don't do things for ourselves. We go to the community and, and work with the community and educate them. So we adopted a village. This is a single mother with three kids. And we gave them tiles. We gave them roofing material. We spot and they give... English. The lady there is... My ex-environment officer, eight years for with me, Zuraida, she takes the lead, but because she, her health no good, she focus on the village. So we, it's nearby, and they have really improved. Uh, the single mother, daughter was very shy, and now she's doing so well in her school. And now she teaches the other kids, we give her 50 ringgit a month. <laughs> yeah, don't go out, so young. Next. Uh, we also adopted a what you call special school. They are what you call autism. Yeah, so they do farming there. We bring them to do housekeeping just for three hours and give them meal, uh, so that when they finish, it's very hard for people to employ. We take normally two to three, but they don't sometimes stay too long. One year, two years, uh, they have a skill. Although they work only fifty percent. But we give them the full salary because it's our duty to help the, the less fortunate community. And this is part of our work. Yeah. Next. Okay.
Next. Oh, because I didn't want this is when they are autism, they are difficult to handle. Sometimes uh, two to one, two caretaker to one. So that you can't take too many. So they were down there to see what we do. Uh, we always bring them to show them, would you like to learn something before they come to us to work half day? Because they are young, they are students, but we open their mind out, there is opportunity. We need to help them. So when we talk about SDG, about community, this is what we are talking about, community. How do you help your community around? Yeah, next. Ah, sorry. Now, uh, go back. These are part of the activities every day we do. So that's why we got full-time environment education officer. And this could be linked up with the different SDG. Yeah, because our, you see, again, uh, I'm a naturalist, environmentalist. So there's a lot of science behind. Yeah, so these are the things that we do. Bunny by the beach, rock painting, organic farm tour, another bunny by the beach. Uh, we have got uh, then what's in the sea. We have pukat tarik, and then uh, you get octopus, you get kembong, you get starfish, you get crab, you got puffer fish, you get jellyfish. We explain to them, and not all jellyfish is poisonous. We show them this jellyfish like got legs, you can lift it up. Because only the jellyfish with long tentacles are poisonous. That's why they have long tentacles to stun the 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 prey to eat those with feet they do not stun so they are not poisonous you can eat them we actually eat the jellyfish yeah uh, next so we have uh, now because some of you want to look at the esg so esg is always linked to sdg so you can have no poverty zero hunger when you teach people yeah quality education life on land so so all this you can quantify yeah, next, I want more time for Q&A. Next, we are very late. We got wood painting, beach cleanup, what's in the sea, yeah? Next. <coughs> uh, every day, we have a lot of schools. Uh, schools around the country, they come and see what we do on sustainability. Uh, when I have architects or engineers coming, I will do myself because uh, I develop the whole system. Uh, Besides teaching in hospitality, I do teach in architecture and engineering and biotech. Yeah, I, I lecture in a number of countries. But these are the association. Yeah, I teach on behalf of the association because capacity building. Yeah, so we do have a lot of school visit. Next. Now this is what's in the sea. You see all the different fish. This is, is called tripod fish or uh, this ikan lembu yeah you can see they have got spikes all over i used to pull legs to my friend you know why it's called ikan lembu it moo mm. i just joking it's called ikan lembu yeah now you see the different fishes all rest and crab and the, and the kids love it the adults also love it no? be in touch experiential education Next, yeah, bunnies by the beach, yeah, so interacting. You see, when our focus from day one was family, our rooms are built for family. Smallest room, 42 square meter. The villas, individual, are 52 to 55 square meter. So easily two adult, two kids. So you have to have a focus because I want education. So I didn't want to have more room, but I want big rooms. Yeah. So we get a lot of families coming. Next. Yeah. And uh, activity again. And we are under a tree house. I built this tree house during COVID because this tree fell on my, in, on my villa. So all the wood, 90% is from the garden. Next. Uh, we do organic farm course. Uh, I just don't do it, uh, just community, not just Malaysia, but I get people around the world coming to learn. Some of them stay for a month on, as volunteer. Sometimes I do three days, four days courses. Next. Yeah. Uh, so 
I built this shelter here. That's my farm school. Yeah. So always theory with actual class learning. So it helps. Yeah. Next. Well, oh. Yeah. Next. Next. Yeah. Waste management. Now we do not have any discharge of organic waste. Yeah, from day one itself. Next. To you. Uh we, we collect everything, whatever it is. Don't worry, people say cannot mix food waste, can cannot mix protein and things like that. Cannot give give uh, put lemon, orange. Forget about all this, keep it simple. Everything you put into put inside. Bubo cha cha. You know, nasi champo. You think nature is very uh nature don't choose if there's a dead cow or dead dog or cat or deer, they, they still feel so, solid out. So you don't worry. Dump everything in. But if it's smelly, bury it and then cover. Everything you cover with soil is okay. You don't get the rest, you don't get the flies. Yeah. And of course, uh, twice a year, I put compost into the sand. But now I got a layer or it's hard to grow. Next. So I goose you know, for 14 years or 13 years, I didn't get to eat my chicken, my goose, my turkey because I had pythons, big python, 8 to 12 feet python because behind me was like a jungle. Now there's development, there's less now. He built a 10 feet wall. So, so this is what we do. Uh, all the thing, waste food, I convert to black soldier fly. So I collect from 10 hotel and restaurant. I put it in the, uh, it's like a, you chop the food into baby food, you feed the maggot. Black soldier fly is a family of house fly, but they don't have mouth, they don't eat. I started this journey eight years ago. Yeah, I brought it to Ministry of Environment or Ministry of, yeah, uh, environment that time Yo Bilin was the minister. <laughs> Today, they asked me, Prof, can you help us? Yeah, uh, Langkawi has the issue with waste food. I said, no problem. I've been teaching this, but I didn't know how to scale up. I went to Indonesia twice with different team to learn about how to scale up in Black Soldier Fly. Next, again, I'll show you. We bury and then we, we wait. Yeah, next. So we separate all the things and uh, I say, don't know how to get rid of glass. So I put them in the wall. In my villas, I put them on the wall. My to uh, this is my swimming pool toilet. Now I'm buying a glass breaking machine to powder it because millions of bottle in the waste dump. And now I'm going to make swimming pool filter. Glass is four times more efficient than sand filter. So I'm now testing and building it up. Well, I'm just uh, ordering the machine to get them into powder. Uh, you can make bricks, you can do artwork and pottery with it. So you have to find solution, but you need some technology involved to solve the environment issue. Next. Energy efficient next. It's very easy. I just use solar dryer, east to west. Now this was used to be jungle. Now there are villas behind me. Yeah. So use nature east to west, and I because I dry flower, I dry leaves. You know, uh, I, I dry as many things for tea. Yeah, moringa leaf tea, Frenchy penny flower tea, mulberry leaf tea. Yeah, mango leaf tea. I charge people five six ringgit. I get it free. Money, money, money. Yeah, sustainability. If you know how, you make more money. So we run our operation. Actually, uh, we are thirty percent more profitable. So our ROI. Someone from Sunway Property, you ask when is a hotel going to get the ROI? They will tell you ten to fifteen years. Some never. We got our ROI in seven years. Yeah. So, so if someone understand that 
sustainability is more profitable, they will go. Because I spoke in the Asia Pacific uh, Accountant Conference about 10 years ago. They said, Professor, don't talk to us about We need to earn for human greed to satisfy. Show us the money. We are accountant. The accountant control the whole hotel, whole business is the accountant. But some of these are six to eight years return. Solar panel, eight years. Water tank, eight years. But price has gone up six years, six and a half years. Now we are 17 years, the water tank are still around. Next. Ah, go back to old style. Why? Some of the simple drying, drying, use the sun. Lah. No need to use a dryer. So you need to get go back to basic. Yeah? And it's healthier because it really use you we kill any bacteria or fungus or, or or virus. Yeah? So you sometimes you must go back got space. Next. Of course, in the design side, the first thing in green building is architecture. The green architecture will actually save you 15% of energy already. Yeah, uh, yesterday, uh, Serena Hajidas, who actually designed this building, yeah, she, uh, I was also on board of the Malaysian Green Building Council, so she's the president this year, but I didn't want to join this year because I'm busy in Langkawi still because we're renovating, upgrading, and I'm doing more research where I need to be there. Next. Next. Ah, okay, so you always measure. That's why I need, uh, we are not so efficient now because I have a new team. I have a completely new team. Out of the 30 people that I brought back, very difficult to change old style thinking. Sad to say, yeah? So I need a new team. So you cannot push them. Slowly, slowly you have to train them to think. Why? Yeah, because hospitality, they do not understand sustainability. So I have a new team. I got a new environment officer, I got to train them. Yeah? So I'm there to train and groom and things like that. So it's not so good. Yeah? But you have to, that's why statistics has to be kept. Yeah? Then you see where you go. This is the baseline. Then you measure every month. Yeah? Every month you measure food produced, water use, energy use. So you've got to have data. Next. I'm going to take a picture to show my hotel staff how many people are listening to me. <laughs> Don't mind. <yeah. laughs> Hello. You have to think of how to duplicate yourself. Yeah, I'm already 76. Is it 76? <laughs> 1956, I was born. Next year, I'll be 67. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> so, so you need to make sure that sustainably continue with others. Okay, this is uh, on electricity. Next. I just move very fast. Next. Water efficiency. I I brought in 125, 4,000 liter tank. It's half a million. And my hotel friend say, Anthony, when are you going to get there? 300,000. When are you going to get back your, 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 I say eight years. But the first five years, water went up 40%. So six and a half years. Now it's 17 years. It's still running. So we have to think long term. Yeah. Next. Even my grey water, my grey water is a small one. When it goes out, it waters my garden. No issue with soap water. Soap water, phosphate mostly. And phosphate is part, part of the plant nutrient called uh, yeah, NPC. Yeah. Nitrogen, phosphate and potassium. So it's okay. You know the signs? When my head guy said, boss, cannot, the plant will die. I say, I'm the owner. Do it. If the plant die, my responsibility. You see, they don't understand. Yeah? Now this is water for plant. I'll show you something worse. 
come next uh, cost uh, for to keep the the staff happy you know water dispenser has to be certified go away <laughs> they drink from go away so people dig it but i'll show you others next so now you know this has been a challenging thing water bottle plastic bottle glass bottle my option was glass bottle but very heavy logistic so finally now through another conference i spoke in one of the big group of hotels say i put a water, water filter in every room solve the problem of plastic bottle and glass bottle so now we are doing big renovation every villa we put a water filter in the room solve it yeah it's expensive but long term better so sometimes you got to invest a bit yeah next so uh i use rainwater to fill my my swimming pool yeah once finished i use government water yeah uh, in front of the hotel actually is a wetland it's a copy of the wetland whatever i do in the wetland i'll show you what i mean by wetland uh, next air quality no next uh, anything we don't even fog our our property you know fogging is is a uh, diesel and they put a bit of camera i use what you know liquid soap solution your bathing soap five percent you kill the mosquito with the electric uh, pump spray i just spray because i breed uh, what you call stingless bee you kill my stingless bee when you fork the whole property you kill you know so i i do bee farming but more teaching yeah so no chemical goes around the property next okay. oh. uh, this one is uh, i'm taking honey i uh, use a pump to suck out and the gas yeah you can see all the flying around the bees are flying around it's okay yes all the signage in no smoking next made from recycled wood whatever sign next now very important green architecture yeah because that's the basic of green building yeah uh, if you want uh, your property they must be certified so so it's it is necessary yeah and these are all very easy to do yeah uh, building design open air concept hot water now very interesting i met a gentleman he says he's doing aircon with solar so uh, new technology more efficient next uh, i cut down a uh, thick wood i made my tree house everything from the garden and this uh, thick from the garden yeah next this tree fell on my room so i took revenge i made six table out of it yeah this is specific walnut very nice green hardwood or oh, new guinea walnut yeah I'm, I'm lucky i got uh, one of the people that came for my class in organic farming was an indonesia craftsman so he helped me build the furniture next that's my tree house but i do a lot of activity down here with kids yeah a bar and a restaurant so this is a table yeah this is the same wood but once you uh, polish and clear epoxy natural wood got cracked so i go to the sea i collect the shells i put in between everything i'm chippy everything from nature next next now i must show you this is very serious all over the world the beaches are eroding okay i built this used to be white sand i i grew this and i grew the big trees but last five years weather very extreme one of my tree has fallen into the sea the roots are all exposed i consulted engineers and architect what can we do concrete i say you're mad ah. people want to see plants you concrete it geotech material 20 meter long two meter tall it's a bit rubber so plangi has it 
Bank Negara has it, now Park Rock open have it, but they break very easily. During the monsoon, we have driftwood. This driftwood, sometimes one, two ton, when they hit, pff, your rubber gone. Yeah, I've seen Bank Negara redo it twice, three times. Millions. So I come up with my own solution. Next. This is the original beach flat. Now it's steep. So the original white sand is from here. I grew this out. I grew this area 10 to 20 meters wide. I let nature do the work. Shore plants, they grow, grow. I don't touch it, let it grow. After they grow, I plant the trees. Yeah? Nature has a way of working. So because early days was flat, so the, the shore plant grew out. I told the beach cleaner, don't touch my beach, I clean myself. So that's how I created one acre of land. 325 meter, uh, between 10 to 20 meter average of one acre. But it brings down the temperature 20 degrees. It's why you call creating microclimate. White sand 50 over degrees. On a hot day, white sand 50 over degrees. My normal lawn grass, this is a very high dry day, is about 35 degrees. But you have got a tall grass, about 32. A tree and grass, 29, 30 degrees. 20 degrees different. So when the wind blows, you can see cooler. Yeah, in the restaurant good. A lot of people have been to other hotels say, how come your place so much cooler? I say, yes. My seafront is like a jungle. You know, when my daughter came back from UK 12 years ago, I said, Dad, how come our place like terrible? Huh? The grass on the beach. I say, you please, you must be patient. You understand sustainability. Next, I, I want to spend more time. So I built this gabion. Yeah, you see, I put it out yeah, to protect the erosion. I built from waste construction material. Next. So the plants are growing. Next. Okay, next. So I used, this used to be a river. There used to be a tidal river. Someone blocked the river and I get a, a I developed a wetland. Now on my first wetland, it was gone back in 91. And this is 2005, I started a wetland. I want the water quality. When I say wetland, this is traditional. All hotel, all business, septic tank, you dump into the drain, excess water. So this dump into the sea, it goes into, dump into river, river go to the sea. Close your eye, not my problem. But because I want push sustain, I want this water quality drinking standard. You see, you're mad, ah. Drinking standard. That was my goal. Okay, next, come. So, uh, grey water, black water. Grey water is your kitchen water, your bath water. Black water is shit. For me, not just shit, raw sewage goes into my wetland. Because when I bought over, the septic tank not working, I pump raw sewage. I'll show you, come. It took me 27 years of research, 12 years of lobbying, in 2017, the government approved my system. The 12 Malaysia plan, I drafted out the technical act. So all the engineers and architects and landscape architects I certify, they can use my system. Yeah, very challenging. But if you want to push for sustainability, you have to be very patient. Now, EPU, very understanding. Treasury, they came there was a conference organized with UN and there was water security. I sat on the table, UN officer, EPU, Treasury, in that water. I said, I can clean raw sewage in five to six days to drinking water standard. Woo! EPU ears came up. They have to fund in that water one billion a year. So anyway, they have given us 40 million to do a system to treat inner water discharge because inner water you cannot swim in it. Yeah? Plus all of Pantai Tengah and half of Chenang. Because my goal is guests can swim in the water got no issue because my drinking water standard. I was given an award in 2011 
by the Minister of Environment, Douglas Unga, Datuk Sri, when he saw the result, he said, wow, this is drinking water standard. You can drink your shit water. I said, Datuk Sri, no, 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 no. I just want to show you the power of nature. But it took a long time. Yeah. Next, now I was very lucky. Sometimes you need luck. Ah, uh, go back. I go back. Now he is Dato Professor Mazelin. He was the Deputy Vice Chancellor of UKM. He's a chemical scientist and he was the chair of professor of professor of Malaysia. So he chaired the Environment Quality Council. Now the Environment Quality Council changed Environment Act. So he was the chairman and he understood my work. There were the two universities you recognized my work in 2009. UKM, UKM published my work and UTM Johor. So sometimes you need that luck. 2009 and 2017, he sit on it. You understand? So if he is not a water scientist, he wouldn't understand wetland. Next, of course, I publish particle. Now, I grow a lot of things on the sand, my papaya, my banana, so lots of things. Food, 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 yeah? Next, food security, you got land, you grow. This is the beginning of my wetland. Uh, everything comes here. There's a pipe here, water, kitchen water, everything. Now, I must share with you, any engineer, any architect here? Yeah, okay, you are engineer or architect? Engineer, okay. Uh, the engineer that's building the wetland down there are global engineer. Mr. Lim is the owner, they are a big engineering company. Now, this is hybrid. When you go in, it is what you call subsurface flow. It goes under soil. Under soil, and then after that, it's surface flow. So it's two systems in one. Next. So these are the quality. If you know how to read on water quality, yeah, no, not the table, not the table. No. We are, we are we're always ahead of class A drinking water. Yeah. Next. So we see all this. Yeah. Not detectable. Not detectable. Next, I will be very fast. Continue. Next, please. Yeah. Uh, we do a check down here at the end of the the long river. Now it's a pond. Next, someone built. They cover up my the river in Langkawi. You can do anything. You can fill up a river and put a house on it. And that's my land. You go to land office, I claim this land. And that's what happened to us. It was a river. As they exit my property, someone filled a river, built a house over. But the crisis became an opportunity. Yeah? So I discovered now how to make the most efficient wetland in the world. Confirmed by USM P9. They came for my course. Now, next. So again, the test, so we go against drinking water test, which is 60 parameter. Nobody use a wetland test for parameter for drinking. Yeah, you see, oh, not detectable, not detectable. Next. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna go through. Next, it's very expensive to do the check. So we're talking about climate change. I've been on the island since 1988. In our, in our every week, I go up there. But we we'll get flood every five to seven years. Today, almost every year. We can feel it. So this, this is my farm, underwater. Yeah, next. Yeah, so my chicken, they're all flooded. Yeah, so you have to plan how. Yeah, so we have pump now, pump the excess only when it's flood come into the sea once you reach a certain level. Yeah, next. So conclusion is, you know, take it slowly with young people and then guide them and find the right. It's not cheap, sometimes depending, but a lot of things are practical and not expensive. Yeah, but you have to start somewhere. And you have to build your team. Yeah, the top management must give support, and you must have a draw a roadmap on how to achieve. Next, okay, I like question and answer. Come, I rush it through because I want question and answer. 
because we are very late. We started half an hour late. Yeah. Question. Ha ha ha. Good question. Mindset. Mindset was the most difficult. I can buy solar panel. I can buy water tank, but very hard to convince. I was growing organic food. They refused to eat. Photo dirty because it's composting. Got lala. Got you know. Of course you have got uh, maggots down there. Black soldier fly maggot. House maggot. No no no. Good fertilizer come from a pack packet plastic bag. You know chemical fertilizer. So and you know moringai drumstick is the most precious nutritious food in the world today. Super food. They won't eat. They will refuse to eat. Why? Eh, angin lah, kentut, full of protein. Yeah, it's got four times the protein of yogurt. So when you eat heavy protein food, you fat. Oh no, cannot eat. This is the problem. So most difficult is mindset. Yeah, and then the chef won't touch the food. Modern chef say. It's not in the supermarket. It's no good food. My God, old chef, thirty, forty years are uh, very hard to deal with. You know, yeah. So a lot of challenges. Today a little bit easier. I'm there permanently. I say compulsory one week, kangkong twice, moringai twice, and you replace with Brazilian spinach, which I grow. So sometimes got to push it right through. You don't. This is your KPI. You want bonus KPI. Use the food we grow. Yeah, I mean you know, try sometimes you gotta force it down the throat. Yeah, because thinking. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, good. Okay. Yes, you're correct. Early days, EIA uh, Environment Ministry disturbed me because I'm using the shit water. I say, look. My water cleaner than Indian water. This drinking water standard. I'm given a word by minister. I had to go. He said Indian water cannot touch me. He go through span. Yeah. I say after my third meeting, I say, look, I am not going to come and meet you. The next time you call me to explain, you get a lawyer's letter. But I managed to get it approved in two seventeen. They don't call me anymore, because this is now the twelfth Malaysia plan. So they keep quiet. In that water, recently through EPU, my connection to the main road is half a million. That was 17 years ago. Now even more. They say free for you. After that, you have to pay nine to twelve thousand fee for in that water management. I say no need. I use my own system. Yeah. Now I'm doing deep water. Sorry. I think the next speaker come. Any? Yes. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, it's been a tough journey. Yeah, but as I say, I'm so happy now. The government, because of climate change, they're pushing this all across. So my goal is always capacity building and sharing. Yeah. So anybody in the industry, whether you're architect, engineer, designers, I'm happy to share and teach. No cost. Now I I have always been working closely with the uh, UN. The UN now has got two island project. They ask me, professor, how much? I say no, pro bono. They are pro community. You have to do, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's erosion, yes. Island space. Yeah, whole peninsula face. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. As I say, I'm happy to share how the design is and what happened. No issue, and using the constructed wetland, no issue. Uh, I okay. The formula is, I use the fastest growing plant in the world. You can find here some plant double up in eighteen to. 30 hours. Some plant double in five days. Some plant one week. Some plant two weeks. 
So I remove them as they mature, I feed my chicken, my duck, and we can eat it also. So no one does this. It's dynamic management. Yeah. So uh, there is a simple formula to that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we we have thank you. We have a scenario where Singapore government can uh, treat water until become drinkable. So I happened to run into this uh, friend in a seminar. Uh, he's from Islango Joho. So he kind of shared the insight, saying that uh, Joho Islango is not doing it. I'm going to be selling raw water to Singapore, then we buy back treated water. Is it because Singapore government can do it at a more affordable cost? So say, why don't you work with them and see what's their know-how? So, uh, what I'm happy to help Johor to clean whatever water. I am happy to do that. So, so you have any plan in your own uh, scheme of things, like uh, you tie up with Iron Selangor, Johor, uh, people that you know around them? I do not know them. I've been teaching. For me, I just want to tell others how to do it. I've got architects and engineers now traveling around the region doing what I've taught. So if they are interested, happy to do it because today you have to use nature-based solution to cut your CO2. Indah Water has been to my place. There's Indah Water, but I'm yeah. saying that if, you, if that project will kick off one time or another, it's going to have a big impact, not just yes. Uh, yes. in terms of uh, preservation and sustainability yes. but it's, it's good for the honour of our country don't you yes. think so? I, you know, as I say I've been doing this for a long time but it's only now people are getting serious but EPO has seen what I've done that's why they get 40 million to DID to do this system so that people can bake clean water because if you go to all the resort all the popular site of Asia Borokai, Phuket, Langkawi, uh, Botikson. The main area is smell of shit water. That's the problem. Because the solution thing to be expensive. No, it can be done. So my formula is always nature-based solution. I'm a naturalist and an environmentalist. Yeah, I like to share. Yeah, so that's a way we can actually build up our own country. At this age now, money is not the big issue. It is how I can build the next generation. Yeah, the young people and how are we going to help the government. So that is part of SDG. How are you going to increase the education level? I'm neither a qualified architect, engineer or a, a biologist. I'm just by, by passion. Yeah. Uh, so it's passion that will drive you to whatever business you want to do. Study, continuously study. Yeah. Kaizen. You know, Toyota Kaizen. Continuously, continuous improvement. Okay, guys, I think I'm over time. That may be the next speaker. Maybe one last question. One last question. Anybody? No? You can, you can get hold of me. No, I've been here the whole day. Yeah, if there's anything. Thank you.